Today it is time to pay tribute to one of the best drivers in the last 10 years. That driver being of course Fernando Alonso. We're in this video we are going to look back at his memorable career. During the summer break we have some sad but inevitable news. That Fernando Alonso would be leaving the sport at the end of 2018. As Fernando, because of his machinery, could not achieve the success he absolutely deserves. This is what Fernando had to say when he made his announcement. After 17 wonderful years in this amazing sport, it's time for me to make a change and move on. I made this decision some months ago and it was a firm one. There are still several Grand Prix to go this season and I will take part in them with more commitment and passion than ever. Let's see what the future brings. New exciting challenges are around the corner. I'm having one of the happiest times ever in my life, but I need to go on exploring new adventures. I'm sure for Fernando this was a very hard decision to make, because he still has an enormous amount of passion. But given what has happened, he had to make this decision. But how did Fernando get here in the first place? Let's start all the way back in the year 2000. We're at the time Fernando was competing in the International Formula 3000 series, but he did not actually go on to win that series, but nonetheless did show some quite exciting talent. Exciting enough for Minardi to employ him as a race driver for 2001. This was his debut year in Formula 1. Now Fernando in his first year would not score any points, but let's be honest that was down to just how slow the Minardi was in 2001. He was never going to score any points. But despite driving the worst car on the grid, he did impress people. And impressed Renault enough to employ him as their test driver for 2002. As Jarno Trulli and Jensen Button would be Renault's race drivers for that season. But Jensen Button would be dropped by Renault for 2003. Meaning that Fernando for 2003 was back in Formula 1. Because of the close relationship with team boss Flavio Briatore. This would be Fernando's breakout year, where he showed everyone just how good he really was, as he would also take his first win in Formula 1 in Hungary in that season, becoming the youngest driver to win a race at that time. But 2003 for Fernando would be again very impressive, as not only did he have that race win but also two pole positions. One was where he won the race in Hungary but the other one was in Kuala Lumpur. That was only his second race for Renault. He also had four podiums including his first podium at his home race in Barcelona and five retirements. Fernando had put himself on the map. 2004 though was not as good as the previous season as in 2004 he could not win a race in a season that was dominated by Ferrari and Michael Schumacher. But for Fernando 2004 was quite a stop start season as really he could not find the consistency with his results. But that would all change for 2005, where Fernando went on to take his first ever world championship, combining speed and consistency to take the title, with the McLaren of Kimi Raikkonen finishing second. In that season he would win 7 races and take 6 pole positions, with 15 podiums and just 1 retirement. He would also go down at the time as the youngest ever world champion, but he was not going to stop there, as he won back to back titles in 2006, as he just about held off Ferrari and Michael Schumacher, with his great rival retiring at the end of that season. He was only slightly worse in 2006 compared to 2005 but still he did very good, again with 7 race wins and 6 pole positions, with one of those race wins being his first win at his home race. He would also have 14 podiums and just 2 retirements, but his career at Renault for now was over, as he joined McLaren for 2007, something that was announced at the end of 2005. Now even though Fernando only missed out on the championship by just 1 point, it was not a good year for the Spaniard, as in 2007 he was exposed by his rookie teammate Lewis Hamilton, leading to the failure that was this season as he picked up 4 race wins and 2 pole positions, with 12 podiums and only 1 retirement, which was a very costly one in Japan. He probably would have won the title that year without that mistake in that race, but it was now time for Fernando to move on from McLaren, 
as his relationship with the team was destroyed because of the Lewis Hamilton situation, and of course, Spygate. And for 2008, he would go back to Renault. The team, of course, he won his two world titles with, but the team would not be able to return him to that kind of success. Despite Fernando picking up two race wins in 2008, including that very controversial one in Singapore, with his teammate at the time Nelson Piquet Jr. crashing on purpose to bring out the safety car, which massively helped Fernando to win that race. But for most of the time in 2008, the car was not good enough to go for the world title. And the car only came good at the end of the season when the title was not possible. Fernando now had to hang his hopes on 2009 and hope to God that Renault got it right. But they didn't. As their car in 2009 was essentially an upper midfield car. They did go and get pole position at the Hungarian Grand Prix in that season, but they even messed that up with Alonso's tyre falling off after a faulty pit stop. And because of just how slow that Renault car was, it was time for Fernando to leave Renault. But he left Renault with some great memories, winning 17 races and taking 16 pole positions, with 41 podiums and 468 points. And of course, two world championships. Those are some great times they both had together. But for 2010, Fernando would join Ferrari where already in his first race for the team he had success, winning his first race as a Ferrari driver in Bahrain. A great start to their partnership, but after a very, very close battle for the world title, both his and Ferrari's season did not end well, as Alonso missed out on the driver's title by just four points, because Ferrari in the final race massively ballsed up the strategy. It still though was not a bad first season at Ferrari, by getting 5 race wins and 2 pole positions, with also 10 podiums and just 1 retirement. In 2011 though, there was no way he was going to challenge for the world title, as the Ferrari was miles off the pace, with Vettel and Red Bull dominating that season, as Alonso in 2011 only picked up 1 race win, coming at the British Grand Prix. 2012 though would see another title challenge from Fernando, but still in a Ferrari car that was miles off the pace. But 2012 is what makes Fernando one of the greats, somehow going for the title in such a bad car that should have been nowhere near a world championship. And in 2012 also came, in my opinion, his best drive, his Valencia victory, all the way back from P11 on the grid, as continuously he battled his way up to the front of the field. Then he overtook Roman Grosjean after the safety car came in, and then Vettel, who was leading, retired from the race, allowing Alonso to take the win. And for me again, that is his best win. But sadly, despite the amazing performances from him in 2012, he missed out on the championship by just three points, when he absolutely deserved to win the title in 2012. In 2012, he would take three race wins and two pole positions with 13 podiums and 2 retirements. This was Fernando at his very best, and he did deserve that title. Then when it comes to 2013, again there would be no title for Ferrari or Fernando, as the car just was not good enough, as Vettel again took the championship. 2013 they would see Fernando Alonso's final win in F1, which would be the 2013 Spanish Grand Prix. Things now for Fernando only get worse. As in 2014, again Ferrari produced an awful car. A car that was not even good enough for podiums, never mind race wins. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. As at the end of 2014, Fernando left Ferrari. There were some memorable moments when Fernando was driving for Ferrari. But these two together should have won more. As Fernando at Ferrari had 11 race wins and 4 pole positions. With 44 podiums and 1,190 points, a story of what if. After leaving Ferrari, Fernando decided to rejoin McLaren. What a horrible decision this was, as in 2015 McLaren produced one of the worst cars in their history. Fernando was now further away from a race win than he was in 2014, and he was very unhappy about this. In 2016 though, things did improve, as the car was a bit faster and more reliable but it was still not close enough to seriously compete for podiums. There was still a lot of work to be done, 
and in 2017 McLaren went backwards, causing Fernando to contemplate leaving McLaren, as he had a horrible season in the process. McLaren though would get rid of Honda who they thought were causing the issues, and they replaced Honda with Renault, hoping to God that it would work. But once this season came around it was clear that it didn't, as the car in terms of pace was actually worse than it was in 2017. This is exactly why Fernando quit F1. He had just had enough, and he knew he could never get any winning car again. Now if you go ahead and exclude Fernando's year at McLaren back in 2007, his time at McLaren was a disaster. Yes, he had four race wins and two pole positions, but again that was back in 2007. Also with those 12 podiums. And he had 22 retirements at McLaren. 21 of those are from 2015 onwards. A very sad end to a great career. And this is his Formula 1 career. This is as of September the 12th, 2018. He's took 32 race wins and 22 pole positions. With a massively impressive 97 podiums. And 1,893 points. And this is where he ranks on the all-time victories list. He's in P6 in between Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell. And for me, he is one of the top 10 drivers in the history of F1. And one of the top 5 from the 21st century. A legend of our sport. Hopefully in the remaining races, Fernando shows exactly why he is that. A legend. From all of us, thank you Fernando Alonso. And hopefully somewhere out there in motorsport, your greatness shall continue. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with the Singapore Grand Prix preview. And as well, don't forget to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video. And comment down below what do you think about Fernando Alonso's career. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.